Max Blessed, what's happening, my guy? How are you? Good to see you. Good, good. Please have a seat. Oh, it's so nice to have you here, Max. Yes, sir. I think first time ever. Ever. Look at you. In the spot, in the hot seat. Yeah, pretty sick. It's nice to have you here, my friend. You know what I was thinking? There's no, like, Max toy or anything. Yeah, I know. I was looking. I was trying to look. Where, where No, no. Does does any exist? Yeah, we got the, uh, the when they did the uh, action figures. They have them? Yeah. I need to get that. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a bobble? Did you ever get a bobblehead? No, I never got a bobblehead. You got a fat how, DC how over there. Came, I have, like, nine DCs. They made Why like you got so much DC? I don't know. He's not a very good friend, and yet look at look. Yeah. I put him over there. I put. He won't say my name on any of his shows. He refused to acknowledge me. Yeah, I know. It's a you bit should awkward. probably take him down. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, well, this is great. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks I appreciate it. Me, it was good Thanks to see you on me. Sunday at the premiere. Oh yeah, I was sick. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I What'd can't you think wait. of the film? Ah oh, man, amazing man. I can't wait. Um, I got to talk to uh, AZ a little bit after too, and uh, just how open he was. You know, without giving too much away, yeah. just. Uh, they get to see a different view of us fighters that we go through, you know? A lot of people think we're superheroes and the vulnerability of, uh, of Izzy and not only Izzy, of Eugene too. Wow. Seeing, seeing that side, you know, everybody was telling me that like, Eugene is a big, uh, like this big bad guy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like he's this tough guy, but he's actually a nice teddy bear, you know? Most yes. of the guys who that, has that tough exterior, exterior is usually some of, the, some of the nicest people in the world. So it's good to see both of those sides and... I can't wait to till the world can see it, man. Yes. Whatever it premieres, hopefully it premieres big and um, the his story get out, man. It was it was very touching. There's been some great MMA docs. This is up there, in my opinion, as mm. one of the best. And I was wondering, like, man, you got a great story too. When you're watching that, are you thinking, oh, I, I would like something like this about me, or I should have had cameras following me? <laughs> like, were you thinking that at all? I mean, it, it it was amazing. You know, we was here for Izzy. You know, yeah. that's what it is. So that was in my mind, but then. Of course, Tim asked me later, like, oh, what did you think about that, you know? And I was like, I'd love to, you know? We had we had some cameras following us here and there, so we do have some behind-the-scenes stuff. But okay. at the end of the day, yeah, the story would be good, you know? I, I, like the, I like how a lot of people, when they see Stylebender, you know, the, the, the doc, it's not an MMA doc, man. No. It's, a, it's, a, it's an actual doc. It's not a UFC doc or anything. It's an actual life doc, which I think so. it's cool, man. You get to see a little bit. You get to find out more about the dude and... Guys who already connect themselves to style is gonna be even more connected because they're probably be like, oh look, like some of the stuff that happened, like I can compare it to that. So it, it's uh, it's amazing, man. You know, and and style actually sent uh, he reached out to me when he found out that I was in New York. You know, oh, wow. for the premiere. So I just we found out that day. He's like, hey yo, he's like, what's up, brother? He DM'd me on Instagram. He's like, Tim <laughs> said you're here. I got my. I never know what they they had to release. You know, and then he said I'm be I'll be out here. Let me know. I can get you tickets. So. That's awesome. It's cool, yeah. Especially since, and and I feel like I know the answer to the question, but like you know, you 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 fought his boy three times, mm. but there's no hard feelings, right? Eugene helped his guy try to beat you. Yeah. Is that at all weird initially? No, for not you? at all. I talk to Eugene all the time. You know, Eugene, you know, me and him. You still always, talk. Uh, I see Eugene. No, like Eugene. Like yeah. whenever I see him, I talk to him. We always change, wow. change some conversations, you know. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, that's what it is. Like I, ain't, this ain't to me. It ain't nothing personal. You know, he's the best guy in the world. I'm, I like to consider myself one of the best guys in the world, and I'll, I'll keep continuing, you know? Like, people keep giving me a hard time about maybe there be, being a fourth time is so hard. I'm like, it's not that hard, you know? If, uh, if you, whatever step I got to take to get that fourth, one, uh, that fourth shot, I will, you know? If, it's Ar- if it was Arnold, next one. If it's somebody else, keep feeding me, you know? I want to I wanna get back up there. Uh, and we'll talk about the career stuff, but I'm, I, I just want to, you know, because we don't get to ever talk like this, you know, we're always <laughs> on the Zoom and whatnot. How do you like New York? Do you like the I vibe love New York, bro. It's yeah. different than Hawaii. Oh, way different, bro. We had uh, horns beeping everywhere. Yes. It's like, it's a very It's good fast for a city. few days. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't sure. want to live here. Probably, yeah, probably not. Yeah. No, no, I love I love Hawaii because the ocean and yeah. and how, like, living, we're living more laid back. Yeah, a little here. bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean... If you beep your horn at somebody in Hawaii, they probably get out your car and fight you. So I don't know. <laughs> what about the uh, like? You go to the shoe stores. I know you're you're into all that. Have you been checking in here in New York? Well, uh, my wife's been shopping a bunch. Okay, not so you. I, yeah, I, I've been. You're just holding the bags. Shoe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been going wherever. The happy wife, happy life, man. We just uh, like I said after that last fight we, was our anniversary, like right after April 16th, our oh, wedding wow. anniversary. So I I order a bunch. So we ended up going to Japan, and then Tim ended up being like, hey. Let's do this. We go. Let's put a tour together. Let's do this and uh, East Coast tour. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then I told my wife, and the only way to get her, I told her, I, 
come with me and we I'll make sure we do play days where we can just go around the city and stuff because she loves New York so yeah. it's amazing. I thought you were gonna say the only way to get her to come was that you'd say you'd come to the Ariel Hawani show. Oh, I know. That was the, like the Tonight Show <laughs> or something. You know, like everyone wants to, everyone who comes to New York. It's sort of like a big stop. Um, by the way, uh, you you were in Japan, like you said. I saw these photos of you guys. Like you're wearing like this kimono. I think we're gonna show it here in a mm-hmm. second. What what was that? Look at you guys there. I mean, like yeah, we was dressing up, man. Where'd you get that? Uh, uh, Whatever hotel you stay in Japan, this is in uh, Osaka, uh, Kyoto. Okay. I think I was in Kyoto or Osaka. I'm, I'm forgetting where we exactly was, but whenever you are at a hotel, like right near your hotel, there's places to rent, so you can just rent out kimono. Oh, so. sick! Pretty sick. Bro. So you just like walk around the streets like that? Yeah, I wanted to. She <laughs> wanted to really dress up. I wanted to. It was pretty. Well, sick. Where's this? That's that's uh, Tokyo Revengers. That's an anime I watch, and that's their Golden Mikey. So the guys, uh, the guys knew I was. The guys who created the show knew I was big fans of them, and they reached out to us on Twitter. No way. And yeah, we ended up checking them out. They while. reached out to you. Yeah, they reached out to me. Hey, you want to come see this gold? Like nobody can see that that, that gold Twitter statue. So uh, not not Twitter statue. It's gold Mikey statue. And, okay. Uh, what is the the show? Tokyo Revengers. Tokyo Revengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the cartoon stuff. I wouldn't say anime. Cartoon, sorry, anime. is that is that insulting? I, oh, rare. So you, are, you imagine if style was here. What if if is it a cartoon? You, no, it's an anime. It's What's the difference? Karate chop you. Why? Animation. That's the difference. Yeah, that's cartoon. Ah, uh, no, no. That's insulting. If I say I, that to bro, someone, you're gonna be wow. pissed off a lot of people. That's like someone anime. saying to me like pro wrestling's fake. I'm like, it's not fake. Yeah. That's like the same thing. Yeah, ex- almost. I would say almost because, but pro wrestling. That's insulting. Cartoon yeah. is an insulting word. Yeah, just like I was saying, pro wrestling is fake. It's yeah. insulting, you know, because it's just it's a script win- winner. Yes. But these guys putting their bodies on the line, they're athletes. So, yeah. Is that your favorite one? No, right now I've been right now I've been finally uh, falling in love with Naruto Shippuden. This whole trip I've been watching Naruto, Naruto Shippuden. Shippuden. Yeah. Where can, where can I see this? Uh, on Hulu. Oh, it's on Hulu. Yeah, Naruto okay. is on, on. Is that an anime too? Yeah, it's an anime. Yeah. And yeah. is it for kids as well, or is it? Uh, so there's Naruto. That's like more kid friendly, and then Naruto Shippuden is like a little bit more like towards teens and stuff. Okay. And you watch? This is like what you choose to watch. Yeah, uh, we're watching it right now. Wow. Like, Super good. Bro. How Sorry. many episodes? Bro, there's like thousands of. Oh, them. Oh, it's old school one. Yeah, and it's and it's like it's it, there's a lot. I'm on like episode and like Shippuden. I'm on like three hundred something right now. And is it subtitle? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, so they're yeah. speaking Japanese? I, I, I do, uh, it's called dub and sub. I do dub uh, on, on Naruto Shippuden. But okay. then uh, Tokyo Revenge and stuff, we do sub. Where we, it's in Japanese and you read. Okay. Was that your first time in Japan? Uh, no, I've been in Japan a couple of times. Um, and like, what do you think about it? Like, I love Japan, it's incredible, man. Yeah. I love my Japan. Yeah, my, I mean, the food there is great. Oh. The food there is Great and cheap. Yeah, yeah. And so the people, the, the people there are so nice, man. They're so accommodating. And then, just getting around, walking around is great. I mean, if there's any place in this world where I'd want to live, it would probably be in Japan. Really? Yeah. Other than Hawaii. One hundred percent would be Japan. Just because of the vibe. Just yeah, just how it is. Just how it is. You know, super sick. Never got to fight there. Never did. Nope. Would you like to do that? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that you remember that sick. one time when they did that. They did that two cards in the same night where yeah. they did that home, the American card and yes, they went yes, straight yes. to the Japan card. That was yeah. pretty cool. But I would love to fight in Japan. You know, the whole theat- uh, theatrics that happens with it is pretty yeah. cool. People, how you can dress up and even how like the fans are just like clapping in between. You know, it's like, amazing. Yeah, see, I would, I would love. Have to you ever been that. to a fight in Japan? Uh, one of my boys, my, the, my wrestling coach, Michael Nakagawa, he got to fight in Japan a bunch of times. Like two times, I got to corner him. It wasn't like. Really big ones though, but was it was cool, you know? Is that is that kind of like yeah, 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 like you see knockout, oh, like yeah, you hear yeah. that. So it's and how far is it from neat. Hawaii? Uh, what seven hours, six hour flight? Oh, so that's yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's like the twelfth yeah. island. Yeah, it's, it's exactly like going to almost like a little bit longer than going. Actually, the same if we, if we was to fly to Vegas. Right. So it's just in the opposite direction. Right, right, right. Oh man, I love Japan. I got to go to UFC 144 there when it was uh, Benson against Frankie Edgar. Did the, is that the same one as uh, uh, that's when Joe fought uh, Pettis? Joe Lozano. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That was a sick. great one. Yeah, that was on sick. Rampage was there. And they love Rampage. They love Rampage. Yeah, Rampage yes. is a god over there, right? Yes, yeah. I got to walk around the streets with him, and we went to an arcade together. We did a video. 
and I beat his ass in uh, Street Fighter Tekken. <laughs> and I don't play video games. Yeah. And he was like talking up and I beat him on the first try. But just walking around Japan with Rampage because they remember him from Pride, it's like you're, you're, you're walking around with like a legit celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fighting, fighting and, uh, and the sumo's there. It's like they're just yes. gods over there. It's crazy. Yeah. By the way, speaking of Frankie, uh, didn't you do um, like a seminar in Tom's River? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was yeah. that like? It was good fun. I was tripping out. We, we they, had... they showed you love? No oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We we sold out the things so are like 60, 65, whatever the gym could hold. They, they had to stop it because that's how much the gym could, could hold for the seminar. So it was super sick, man. I loved it. And then uh, I did a meet and greet too on the for the fight night on that Saturday this past week. Yeah. And uh, Frankie's uh, uh, stepdad came. Oh, wow. And Frankie couldn't come. He's, I was trying to get Frankie to come, but they had something to do with the, the film festival, too. They had a Saturday night. They were showing something. I don't know if Frankie was in a movie or okay. or one of his friends just supporting, but yeah, that's something they didn't come out. So so you did that, and then uh, this weekend, and we're going to show you're, you're going to Maryland. Yes, sir. You like doing this stuff? It's my first one ever. First so, time doing yeah, seminars. Yeah, so it's good really? fun. Super fun, yeah. Wow, really first thought, time. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, yeah, I, I taught, uh, I did a couple of kickboxing classes. I teached a little while earlier in my UFC career at our gym, but then, yeah, not really the seminar. So it's pretty cool. I didn't know what to expect, and I never really did any seminar. I, I did, like, jiu-jitsu seminars, but I never did a striking or MMA one. So being able to run one was pretty fun. Does it ever blow your mind? Like, you're a guy from Waianae, Hawaii, and here you are in South Jersey, yeah. and there's people, like, paying to learn and be next to you in the same room. Does that blow your mind, or is this all just kind of old hat at this point? Do you ever have moments where you're like, this is some crazy shit? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm like, that's what I say. Like, every day, I'm like, I'm, in the other, I'm across the country, you know what I mean? Yes. Literally, across yes. the country, and then more. Yes. I don't think across the country, but and then more, because there's the ocean. But, yeah, you know, I just... You got to take it in, you know, and uh, it's just a blessing to see these guys. And some guys was that our first seminar that we did on Saturday, some guys didn't even know how to strike. They just came to do they it. Just, just wanted to, to do it. Wow. And, yeah. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. I thought so guys signing up was going to be like at least like mid-level or, or fighters or guys who train, but brand new guys, guys without even, we had a couple guys in, in the class without no gloves. So I was like, wow, it's pretty cool. Do you think when you're done, you'll want to be a coach? I always see what happens, you know. I always be like, I don't want to be a coach. I want to be done with the sport. I want to just walk away. And when I'm done, I'm done. But disappear. Yeah, who knows, man? I because like I love, I love like helping some of my teammates, most of my teammates out. Like I, I love when they got a question. I try, I, I can kind of try to show them. It's, it's kind of frustrating, but then when they figure it out, it's the best feeling in the world. Like, oh wow, this guy finally got it, you know. So we see, you know, never say never. Is it part of you is just like you just don't want to be bothered anymore? I mean, I don't know. I just, I just know that I know the shit I give my coaches. Yeah, stressful. I know. That, and then not only that, I know the shit that the that us as a fighter need to go through. So uh, always in my mind, I was like, man, I just when I'm when I'm over this, I don't even want to talk about fighting. I don't want to do nothing with fighting. But that's just me talking right now. You know, uh, like who knows? I should, could be home sitting sitting at home and just be one of those guys that just drives crazy because it's like, what the hell do I do now? Right, you know right. and. And I'm sure I got to fight, fill the void as soon as fighting's gone. So never say never. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, like you don't really watch random fights, right? No, I haven't been watching. I don't really watch fights, period. You know? yeah. I really don't try. I try not to. I when, just, why is that? I do this. This is what I do. You know what I yeah. mean? At the end, if, if there's like my friend, you know, like my former friend, like DC, but I don't have to worry because he's He's your tired. former friend too? Yeah, he's a former friend. Fuck, yeah, okay, yeah. both of us. He's, he's not loyal to you as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's good to, I, I said, at least it's not guy. just me. I no, won't take it's personal. everybody, bro. Okay, okay, it's good. everybody. Yeah, I yeah. think we have a group. We have a fan page. I can invite to you later on Facebook. Oh, okay, cool. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Maybe he'll respond to my messages there. <laughs> Fucking send him a message. Yeah. You don't watch anything? No, not really. Like, I watch something here and there. Or if somebody tells me, oh, you got to watch this fight, I'll go rewatch it. But most of the time, I'm, I'm probably not going to watch it live. Were you always like that? Yeah, I didn't care too much. Like, Even when you're coming up, like you're yeah, 21. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you'd you watch like uh, Aldo and Pettis guys and whatever, but sometimes it was even live. I, I, or most of the times if I did, it was just because my friend was like, oh, bro, I'm watching the fights over my house, come over. And I got nothing to do, you know? Wow. But now I got like so much stuff. I got a kid, you know? Yeah. Like I got Rush. My wife loves going surfing and doing outdoor stuff. So it's just about like, ah. Uh, Let's go do this instead of sitting around for four or three hours and watching something. More you know? than that. Yeah, Six, yeah, seven sometimes, hours yeah. sometimes. By the way, I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, you used to live in Waianae. Do I still live yeah. here? Yeah, I still live in Waianae. I heard that you and your wife are like celebrities 
in hey, one hey, night. Hey. Like you are the celebrity couple. Like you can't get people are taking pictures of you all the time. Like you are you are the the kings and queen of Wine Night. Is that accurate? <laughs> this is what I was told. I mean, she would not but she's like, okay, where we're from, uh the West Side is all Wine Eye side, but then she's from the city called Macaw. Like okay. it's in Wine Eye. Like there's four it's different in cities that not Nana Cooley, Miley, Wine Eye, and then Macaw. But then all our zip codes is the same. But like when we're, when you're from that side of the island, whatever you are, like if you're a non Akulian, you're a non Akulian. Like you won't tell someone you're from Waina. You know, if you're a Miley person, you bet oh, I'm from Miley. I'm uh-huh. not from Waina. You know, and then and then Macaw is the same. So don't ever. If you ever talk to her, there's a heads up. Uh, don't call her the queen but of Wine Eye because she, she's a she's a macaw girl through and through. It, it isn't like Wine Eye sort of like the umbrella. Over- I, that's what I try to tell people. I mean, I, I know a bunch of Wine Eye, Miley, Nanakuli, Macaw people probably watching the show right now. They'd probably yeah. be pissed at me when I come home. But I always tell them, like, whenever there's an argument to me, I'm like, brother, what is your zip code? Uh-huh. And our zip code is the same. So it's like, come on. Okay, but is that true though? Are you guys? I mean, she's a, she's a professional surfer. She, she was on the World Surf League for a couple years. So. Yeah, everybody know who who both of us are. So it's it's and it's not like it's like LeBron being in Akron, you know. It's not like people's picking taking pictures. Like they see us all the time out, you know. Like they're, you don't they're get real, bothered. yeah, it's they're real annoying. cool. Yeah, everybody's real cool. It's like it's most of the time of like people that live there or people that are visiting and we're at the beach or something. And then they're the people that live there, their friends that's visiting with them. We're like, oh, can we go up there? And then most of the times that. If they're with somebody that lived there or friends that they have there, and they're like, oh, I'm going to tell Max or tell Lessa hi, they, their friend is like, no, don't do that. They're, they're chilling with their family. Leave them alone because they're so used to seeing us. You know, they, they, a lot of these guys, I, they saw me since I was like a young kid, you know, at Wine Eye Store and Tomorrow's or whatever it be, you know. So at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not crazy. They know who we are, and, you know, and we're respected, but it's not insane. Like, oh, we're always taking pictures. How did you guys meet? How we met, oh, man, I... We did. We knew of each other. I was like uh, semi, st- probably stalking her on Instagram, you know, and just planting seeds here and there at her birthday party every year. DMs, of, some DMs. You slide DMs in. and planting, planting my seeds. She had like she, uh, she would always have like this birthday at at the famous Macaw Beach. Okay. And uh, one of my friends was like her friends, and uh, he would always invite me. So and show up and she'd always be like, "What the hell is this guy doing here?" Like she knew who I was. Like, why are you? Are you, to are you like Max Holloway champion at this point? Yeah, I was and she's still was, like, yeah. "Why is this guy here?" Yeah, like why? Yeah, that's how come she was yeah. even more. And then all her, all her cousins be like, "Why is he here?" You know, like why is this guy here? But <laughs> I was like, I would just tell her it's a free beach. My yeah. friend would invite me. You know, yeah. it just so happened it was your birthday. It was, it was a <laughs> coincidence. It, it, no, it was a thought out plan. I, to her, it's a coincidence. Yes, yes, you know? yes. She should never know that. But then it's a, it was a very. I played the long game. You did? Played the long how, game. How long was the long game? Uh, very long, brother. Uh, very multiple long. years. Yeah, You're multiple married years. now? Yeah, you... married now. We're happy. All good. So. Did you want to be married? Like, was for that a, sure. That was a big sure. thing for yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. Did that have anything to do with the way you were brought up? I know, like, you know, your dad wasn't around too yeah, much. Yeah. Your mom, you, your grandparents kind of raised yeah, yeah, you, right? Yeah. Was it very important for you? Yeah, especially exactly. Especially for your son? Exactly. That's what it is. You know, I wanted to show my son that... Uh, that what it had to be to have a father and a mother, you know, because I, I, I really didn't have both of them, you know. I didn't have a dad at all. I had, and it was funny because, like, it took, uh, it took my wife to explain to me that, like, yeah, you had father figures, but that's not the same, you know. Like, my grandpa was my father figure, and, and she had the hard time explaining it. I'd always fight with her, and I'd be like, no, he's like my dad. He's like, no, but he's not. He stood mm-hmm. your grandpa, you know, and she finally, it finally hit me where it's like, yeah, he was a father figure, but he wasn't my actual father, you know, so... If I can give my son a father and mother, then it'd be great. Um, do you do you have any contact with your dad now? Not really, not really. Yeah, not really at all. Does that bother you? No, it is what it is. You know, I I, I settled out. I settled out quite a while ago. You know, I, uh, when I was growing up, I I wanted to contact him, this and that, and for some reason, you know, I, my mom had her reasons, and she was like, no, no, no. Finally, I was of age. I did it my side. Tried it out. Didn't really work out. So it's like, it's cool, you know. I understand. I got no ill will to the guy, you know what I mean? Like, I got I to gotta still send love his way because without him, I wouldn't be here right, today. Right. So. But at the end of the day, yeah, it doesn't hurt me at all. You know, it happens. Do you even People know where he apart. is? Yeah, he's, still, he's on the island. Oh. Yeah, you, he's on the island. It's not small enough to where you may run into each other. I mean, it is. It, it could, but. It hasn't happened. Yeah. So. And what about your mom? My mom, I still talk, yeah, my mom is there, yeah. She's been to your fights and yeah, everything. Yeah, all she's time. all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know she has battled some stuff, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's good? 
Yeah, yeah, she's good. She's okay. good. She's good. Still, I mean, when you battle that kind of stuff, it's never ever. It's a never ended battle, you know. So she's still fight, fighting those stuff, but she's. I would say she's good, you know. I, I was uh, watching some old interviews of you, uh, and I, you told the story. I think it was to Tyron Woodley when he came to visit you. Uh huh. When you were in fifth grade, which is wild because I just came from my son's fifth grade graduation this morning, so I'm all like emotional about it and shit. Oh, you I were grabbed the about, bandana. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And Crazy. You took the. You're learning about drugs. Yeah. And you, Dare was in the Dare project. Yes. You know the Dare project? Yes, D A R E. E-E, yeah. Right. So, so you're learning about drugs. You go home, and what happens? I go home. I got this bandana, like thinking, like, well, last at that time, it was like, you want to be a ninja, you know? You remember, like, you put it on your, you put it on your head, or you put it like the cowboys, or whatever. Pull this thing off the shelf, and freaking crack pipe hits the ground, and I'm like thinking, I look, I see it, I'm like, holy shit, like, what the hell, like. I'm like putting it together, like, oh wow, like what what at first I was like this, I was figuring, I was figuring, I was like, what is this? Whatever. I put it back, you know, put the banana back, put it back, put it back. And then one year later, sixth grade is the DARE program. And then I found out, like, holy shit, like That's what that was. Yeah, that's a fucking wow. that's a crack pipe. And I was like, what the hell is going on? You know, and You didn't uh, know at the time your mom I didn't know. I didn't know. So was this uh it was insane, but then I saw some stuff that you're not supposed to see, you know, like my mom fighting with or with her uh, with her siblings and stuff over, like, in front of us when we are like, kids and showering and stuff. So I always thought, like, what the hell is going on? Like, to me, this is normal. You know what I mean? This is normality for me because I see this. You know what I mean? So I'm not questioning it. And then when you watch these movies and stuff, that's come most of the time I watch movies, like, this is fake. Mm. There's no way a family can be like this or whatever. So at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's just things I feel like I had to go through, I had to endure so I can get my story out later on. Um, when you found that pipe, did you ask her? No, I didn't. I'll put this shit. I, it looked, it looked like it wasn't supposed to be touched or messed with anyway. Okay. So I put it around. Like I used to get cracks, you know, for my mom, my grandpa, my grandma. Like if we got out of line, and we did something bad, we get, we we stood in that time where we'd get lickings with like yeah. hangers and belts or whatever is in arm reach. You know what I mean? Pet, like uh, wooden spatulas, uh, iron tongs, whatever it is, you know. And I was like, Whoosh, I better put this back and. Put it exactly how I found it and get out of here before I hit cracks. So when did you find out that she was using drugs? To six, uh, in sixth grade when I put That's it. I was what, like, okay. what? The, the dare, the one year later. Yes. I was like, what the hell is this? I seen this at my house. You know what yeah. I mean? But I'm not, but I'm not in my mind. I'm like, who the hell do I tell? I cannot not tell. I just had to live with it. You know, I lived with it forever until like we was in high school and we could actually like question about it or 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 my I had a I had an older brother that was like four years older than me, and he was like he was like telling him stuff and then. He was in high school, uh, in college, he's graduating college, he's having a kid, and then I remember him like telling my mom, like, you're not gonna be a part of this kid's, uh, your, this grand, your grandchild's life if you don't clean, and then I think that was the thing that pushed her, you know, and she's been, she been good ever since. Oh, wow, that was it? Yeah. Damn, you, you, you mentioned that like, you, she would go away for like three, four, five days. Brother, without me knowing, you know what I mean? And I'm just like. So I'm who's just, raising you? My grandma, my grandma, okay. grandma. so we lived, we lived with my grandma and grandpa. Okay, and when you say we, how many of you was uh, me, uh Me, my younger brother, and then my older brother. Okay. That's pretty much who raised us. And it was like, my grandma and grandpa's house was like the house for all, all of the grandkids. So like at one point, there was like all, like they have my uh, my cousins had like maybe like 10, 12 of us in the house at a time, you know, like because we all went to the same elementary school. And then when they started like, moving out of Waianae or, or going to a different school or some of them went to a different school out of Waianae, then they all started like not really coming over and stuff. But then most of the time was, I always had cousins, you know, and uh, and growing up with them. So it was just, I always had like a lot of people in the right. house. But when, when she's away for like four, five, six, seven days, are you asking your brothers or your grandparents? Like I, I think so. It was m- more me and my younger brother. Like we'd always ask each other like, what, you know, you know, if what, like his mom coming or whatever, or, and then she'd just show up out of the blue. And then it'd be like, oh, okay, whatever. But it would be scary, you know, like we know she would disappear and be like, what the hell is going on? You know, like one or two days is one day fine. And the two days that tanking and three days and like, cause she was the one that she would you usually would take us to practice, like to when we was playing baseball or whatever, you know, and then my grandma would take us and then she'd just show up on the Saturday game and it'd be like, oh, okay. And then we, I thought that was normal. That was the original dream for you, right? Baseball player. Yeah, 100%. You wanted to be a baseball player. Yeah. And that's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like around ninth grade, you found out like you need good grades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what really like. Exactly. Why baseball? What was it about baseball? I just was playing baseball all the time, you know. What position? 
I was I was an infielder. Okay. Yeah, I used to play baseball all the time, and uh, and then like even ninth grade, I have a cousin that's like two years older than me. Like one of my, he was my best man at my wedding. You know, like a brother. I'd consider him a brother, and uh, he just always like he was just he was always better than me and faster and stronger, or whatever. But I always just would compete with him. I'd be like, bro, I'm gonna compete with you. You know, like I'd like. The only reason why I played the position is because he was playing it. I was like, I'm gonna be better than you. Like I said, so what it is. I was just competitive in that way. Like, like to the point where like we even uh, with him would play like uh, like chase master on top of the street. You know, like tag, and like he would do in juke. I would see him do him. I would start trying to do him just so I, to find out if I could do it better. You know, so that's just what it is. You know, I was just competitive from uh, from being a young kid. And uh, why did you stop playing baseball? I found fighting. Oh wow! Yeah. How did you find fighting? So ninth grade, ninth grade play baseball, tenth grade playing baseball. Towards the end of the season, I met this, I met this guy named Josh Keanu, one of my best friends now, and he got me into fighting. So he was fighting, you know, this tall, goofy kid with like he had this weird like mohawk. I remember in ninth grade I saw him and I'd be like, and I was like telling myself like, what the hell is this guy's deal? Like I'd fucking beat this guy. He was huge though. I was tiny. I was a small kid, so I don't even know what I was thinking. I was just. Being an idiot, and because I, I was just a hothead kid, all the way to, all the way through, all the way to ninth grade, until I know when I had to figure it out, you know. And then I remember I was like, I'd probably beat this kid up. Which two years later, thank the Lord, I didn't try him because he, and I became friends. He invited me to come train, and he beat me up that night in training with just like one punch, a jab. Wow! Literally, just beat me, like beat me up, and I was like questioning. I remember going home and thinking, like, holy shit. <laughs> Thank the Lord I didn't fight him in school. I would have been, the, I would have been, I would have got my ass kicked. <laughs> I would straight up. I don't know how else to say it. So, and then there was him, you know, and then he was fighting on Saturday. So I went training with them on Wednesday, had that sparring. I did good at sparring, except for him. He's like, he's like six, I think like six, four. Oh, wow. Whatever, 100, 190 pounds, you know, and like, I'm like, I'm like, Probably like five seven, five eight, like one hundred twenty five pounds. You're a high school pounds. kid. Yeah, high school yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, you know. And but he's a high school kid. We see him great. Jeez. He's just huge. You know oh, what I mean? Wow. Like he was. He fought at one eighty five. That's why that that uh, that fight night. But yeah, he told me, "Yeah, come. I'm I'm getting ready for a fight. Whatever. I guess so sparring. I did good with everybody else. This and that. And then we come back Thursday, and I I, I show back to training, and then the coach asks me, "Hey, you want to fight Saturday?" And then I was like. I was like, yeah, why not? And he's like, oh, you beat the first fight of the night. The fight just dropped out at 125, a kickboxing one. I was like, oh, for sure. Because in my mind, I had to ask my grandma for $35. <laughs> there's no way, you know what I mean? I'm like, there's no way they're going to give me thir like $35 to go and watch this fight, yeah? So I'm thinking, I fight, I get it for free, and I can watch my friends fight. And then, so I, instead of going to my grandma, when I come home, my mom was home, I was like, oh, mom, I want to fight. I, I, so I want to fight this Saturday. Can I, can I get your consent? And she's like, and then the only thing she said, Yo, are you gonna win? I was like, I was like, I don't know. And she's like, Well, you better win if I'm letting you fight. And then ended up, you know, that Thursday, sat Friday win, Saturday fight, ended up winning. And I was just hooked, bro. That was You've like, only been training for like a week at this point. Yeah, three days with him. That's insane. I mean, I guess that guy had had Were you some nervous. No, I just wanted to fight, bro. I was like, bro, I, I mean, you, we got into street fights. I would fight with my younger brother all the time. This and, is a little bit different. Yeah, this is a little bit different. But then this is a fight. And in my mind, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, I I get to get into the fights for free. I don't have to pay. You save $35, bro. So I'm like, bro, this is easy. This is and what easy. is this, MMA? No, 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 no. Kickboxing. kickboxing. Just straight kickboxing. Okay. So this is like the time when You're K1 like was huge. Yeah, I was 16. Yeah. And K1 was huge. So I was like, oh, I want to be a K1 fighter. And then two years later, we all graduating. And this guy uh, and uh, BJ is fighting uh, the freaking GSP, the Canadians' great, yeah. great hope, and this whatever. Is the first or the second? I have no, I, I forget which one it is, but I remember they was fighting. What year is this? Uh, it's so. Uh, oh, oh nine. I think yeah, oh nine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was ninety four when he went up to one seventy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, yeah it was oh nine. Yeah. So yeah, it was that fight. And I remember seeing his his payment or something online or something said that he's making thirty or sixty k. And I, I thought like, wow, that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? Like, I, bro, forget this kickboxing shit. We gotta go in MMA. So, decide to MMA, and then the rest is history. That is what. By the way, did you win the fight, the first one? Yeah, yeah. My nose is like regular size. My nose after that fight, I got kicked three times in the face. That fight, <laughs> it looked like yours, Arrow. It was terrible. Wow. It was terrible. Wow. <laughs> but it was like five times the size of my nose now, and I was like thinking like. Damn, this is crazy, but how fun it was, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted to play. A decision. 
decision. Yeah. So what, what is it for like a 16 year old? Is it three rounds? Uh, it was three rounds and we did, we, it was easy. We did three rounds, minute, half rounds. Okay. Oh, That's two minutes, two minute rounds, two minute minutes, rounds. So, so six minutes. Did your mom come watch? No, nobody came watch. I didn't tell nobody. So when you Only came my home, mom did knew. she like, yo, you went, like, how does that work? You I didn't come? even remember, to be honest. Okay. I, I slept over at my friend Josh's house. We, we, <laughs> my friend Josh, he got robbed, bro. That was his first ever fight. He got robbed. Like, he was slipping and dodging. Those judges, man. Bro, they robbed him. Yeah. I was like, this is crazy, bro. He was looking like the Gypsy King out there before yeah, the Gypsy yeah, yeah, King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. He looked good, but he ended up like, he was like more into sticking and moving. But then after that fight, he fought a couple more kickboxing fights. He just knocked people out because he's like, bro, frick this decision stuff and yeah, slipping. Yeah. Like, he just started... His name was Bazooka, so he just started sitting down and bazooking people, I guess. Did he become a fighter? No, he never did. They all stopped. I'm the only one that, yeah. that saw it true. How is that possible? Like, why did you stick with it and they didn't? I just wanted to. They wanted different stuff, you know. Right. He, he got into music. Yeah, he, he has a great job now, too. He works at, uh, at, uh, in Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. So, so like, he, he's, like, set, you know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, like, a bunch of my friends, they just, they just stopped, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I, I have no idea why. I just... I just knew what I wanted to do, and I told him, like, and then when you start finding out how much money these, these people are making, it's like, bro, you can do this, you know? Were you a bad kid growing up? Oh, 100%. So, you know, quick story, funny story. Like how I said, ninth grade, I had to change it around, right? Because, like, in eighth grade, like, seven and eighth grade, I had, like, I had a chair. I was never really in class. I had a chair next to uh, the vice principal, the VP. <laughs> yeah. Because you were there all the I time? I was just, like, I, 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 like, me, I had friends, and we just was, like, who is this hooligans? Like, just, like, not doing really crazy stuff, but just always getting in trouble and just being a nuisance, you know? So, it was, like, I don't know what it was. Is it just, was. like, like the usual type of stuff? Yeah, or just, like, not listening okay. or whatever and, like, Acting feeling up. like the world, like, the world owed me something and this and that. And then I remember in, like, uh, eighth grade, uh, not not when I was in eighth grade, when I graduated or whatever, and I got to go back to uh, one intermediate for career there. And then, and then you talk to the eighth grade classes, and one of the classes that I got to talk in was the was my science class, and Mr. Smog uh, Mr. Smotis is his name. And I remember going there, and I remember like telling these kids, like, "Bro, look, like I was sitting right here in that seat. Like this is my actual table." I asked Mr. Smotis when I was in class, that was my <laughs> seat, you know. And they all laughed and whatever. But I was just explaining them, like, because I remember I told them when I was in eighth grade. And career day was happening, and somebody came to our class to come talk to us. And my whole mind is like, you don't know how it is. You don't know my personal life, and you don't know what's going on this side. You you you, you grow up in you grew up in Hawaii Kai or Kahala or Kailua. Like you like you have no idea what's going on this side. Like I just thought so. The world owed us Hawaiian people something, you know. And then being able to tell that story to them and tell them like, look, bro, it's, nobody owes you shit. You know, if you want something, go and get it. And the only way you're going to get it if you work hard. So at the end of the day, it's just giving hope to these kids. and Just letting them know that it's not, the, it's not the end. You know, a lot of these people from these public schools, they all, all, they, all, all they surround themselves with is like, you know, like no disrespect to no one, but the aunties or uncles, whatever it may be. And, and, and they go and they, they, they do great things in sports in high school. And then right when high school is done, they're okay with that. And like after that, they go into like a job site and then, when they start working every Friday, they meet up with the same group of friends and they talk about the same things of what they did in high school and how great they was. So it's kind of like a cycle, you know, and I want to break that cycle for kids. Like, guys, look, you guys can do great things in college. You guys can even do great things in pros, you know, like you guys just got to get out there and, 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 and see the world, you know, because we're like we're almost sheltered, you know, I mean, Instagram and the internet and whatever is kind of a good and bad place. It gives like the weak of voice and stuff, but it's actually showing a lot of kids now. It's like, look, there's so much more out there than where my city I'm from, you know? Is that part of the reason why you still live there? Oh, and I, I just, I love wine. I, okay. I love wine. Like training and stuff. All my coaches like, bro, you're crazy. Like it takes like 40, 45 minutes. If there's traffic, like an hour, maybe a little over an hour to get to my gyms when I train. But I'm like, bro, it's a perfect time to freaking debunk and think about myself. Yeah. I Heading to training when it's an hour, it kind of pisses me off. You know what I mean? <laughs> but driving after, after getting my butt Chilling, kicked yeah. or my ass kicked in training conditioning or at training, then it's like, it's a good breaker. But like getting there is frustrating, but it's like, it's a give or take, bro. You know, and like, I, I always say the the best side is the west side, and you know I'm I'm me, and I, I may I may be biased, but I I love wine with all my heart, and I just want to show kids not only from wine that that people kids that 
are from town like wine I like we can do great things mm. don't let this don't let don't put yourself in a bubble and don't and don't think because he didn't do it he didn't do it you can't do it you know what I mean and don't think like oh look at me I like max I did like be better than me like I'm just like I'm just the tip you know what I mean like you can go above and beyond that's the main that's the main you goal. talk to a lot of the kids you go to the schools you do things like that there we I try I try like the pandemic put a real big yeah. hold in it you know yeah. and we're trying to do it back we're trying to figure out me and Tim right now with the UFC actually when I get back we're actually working out with the boys and girls club that I grew up at and when I boys oh, wow. and girls club and we're gonna actually do something to a point where I believe is we're gonna open up a gym a place with mats or whatever and a couple times a week try to get somebody in there. I think there's telling me of my choosing like a trainer and then I just pop in there and there and train people and give kids that outlet, you know? If they want to do that, then that's what they want to do. So hopefully we can give back little by little by little because all, all you need is little change, you know? If you can uh, if you can change one person, that next person can change one person. It's just a ripple effect from there on. Because I think like us, uh, I guess you would call us mainlanders. Yeah. yeah. I think when we think of Hawaii, we think of like... Just paradise. Yeah. I mean, and that's not wrong, but like... That's not Waianae. No, I, I, no, not at all, man. I mean, coming coming into Waianae, you know, right in Nanakuli, like thank, thankfully there's the beach, but it's like on a hill and then the, the road is like this, so you can't see it, but it's just tense, you know, just... Tons of homeless, like a lot oh, of wow. homeless, a lot of the homeless comes to Waianae, even if it's not homeless on uh, from wow. Waianae, but it's a lot of, it, I don't know, they just get pushed down to our side uh, just because of our, or what we are on that side, you know, and, uh, and, and it's a sad thing to see, but, but, but some of the, some of the homeless is like, they're, ni- they're nice people. Some of the, if you actually get to meet some of them, some of them actually, is, their house is there or their tent, whatever you want to be, is much more cleaner than somebody who actually owns a house. You know what I mean? They know how to take care. They just can't afford. Some guys in Hawaii just cannot afford. Like some guys are houseless because they can't afford the high demand of how much it costs to live in Hawaii. You know, so at the end of the day, it's just, uh, it's just great, man. I, 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 I'm just here to try and be a, a, a real light to, to, to people who feel down, you know, because I've been there and, and that's why I come, you know, going back. I know it's off topic, but back to the style bender, his his, his doc. I can't wait to see, man. I can't wait to the world to see, cause like, there's a lot of situations that I think so. A lot of people, people who's not athletes, people who's just normal people fighting their own demons in their own way, gonna watch that and be able to compare and be like, wow, this guy that's like seen out to the world to be this Mr. Tough Guy or whatever, even with the coach Eugene, you know, like this guy just seemed to be like the tough guy, the most masculine man in the world, that to to see them so vulnerable, I think so it's going to help a lot of people in the world. I was actually thinking of you during the documentary because I saw you, so I knew that you were there. Uh, I'm not giving away too much. He even mentioned it. Like he, you, you see his therapy sessions mm-hmm. uh, and you see a guy who's like the yeah. baddest 185 on the planet, planet opening yeah. up and getting emotional. When you saw that, was any of that relatable? Because you've talked about mental health. For sure, health. bro. For sure. You know, even that, like even like to today, like, I always tell my, I don't want, I don't need to talk to nobody. Like I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. You, you know? say like, that today. Yeah, like, like even to today, like I, I fight myself. Like you yeah. don't have to talk to nobody. You know, like when you, when you just prep talking. But, but then watching that after seeing Izzy doing it, it's like, well, maybe I should. And then talking to Izzy a little bit and finding out how much different people he talked to. I'm like, wow, like this guy actually talked to people. Like I thought I was the only one fighting this, but he's like doing it. You know what I mean? So. That is a relief, you know, like he, like like I said, like how the doc is going to open eyes to other people. He opened eyes to me, bro. Like mm-hmm. he did a lot of stuff. Like I even talked to him after the doc and I told him about some of the, some of the personal stuff that he was dealing with. I was like, brother, like I was right there and he was tripping out, you know what I mean? So I was like, bro, I, I'm crazy. Like more, more like than anything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do, do you talk to someone now? I, no, I haven't. I know, not yet. So Have my, you ever my, talked why, to someone? No, I, about mental health and stuff here yeah. and there, like not, not like a, like an actual, actual go out and pay somebody. Like we talk to someone because we know someone, you know, okay. like, but I want to try and maybe set up sessions now and, yes. and just see how it is, you know? Like, I mean, if it's not for me, I was one of those guys uh, knocking it before I try it, you know what I mean? Then when you see it, it's like, bro, like, it, it's sad it took me to watch Izzy's doc to do it, but, you know, better late than never. But you have talked about mental health and 100%. Like and I talk to people all the time, yes. you know. So I'm I, surprised that you haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in that in that way of like um, like sports psychiatry or, yeah. or, 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 or or life coaches and stuff for sure. You know, like I talk to a lot of people about about mental health and being able to take care of your mental health. But like in, in that sports psych, like in that sports way of thinking like 
in my way, I'm thinking, no, I got this, you know, whatever. So that's the different way I was looking got at it. it. Have you ever been depressed? Oh, for sure. When, for when, sure, when? brother. You know, when uh, when I was supposed to fight Frankie the first time, I had a hold in my ankle. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then and then after that, the whole freaking Khabib thing happened. I was out here in Brooklyn, and that happened. Like, it was just like, I couldn't catch a break, bro. It was just one after another after another, and I just felt like I couldn't catch a break. And I was like thinking, like, why me? Why me, you know? But then... But then, you know, figuring out, reaching out, that was when mental health was like a huge thing. You remember that, like what, two, that was like 2018? Mm -hmm. I think 17 yeah. and 18 was like a huge thing. I think the Gypsy King came out talking yeah. about it. Kevin and Love, DeMar yeah, DeRozan. Everyone, yeah. the who's who was talking about it. So I was like, oh, this is crazy. So I started looking into to myself and then, and then just, you always got to remember, you know, the main thing that I like to tell people when they're going through tough times is like, uh, you know, without the rain, there wouldn't be a rainbow. You know what I mean? Wow. Like at the end of the day, it, it, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? That all the time, all the time, there's a hurricane. After the hurricane, there's the you know, it's perfect. It's mm -hmm. still, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, bad stuff gotta happen. So the even greater stuff, you know, the rebuild can happen. Yo, I love that one. Without the rain, there there isn't a rainbow. There's I, no rainbow. I always say it's always the darkest before the dawn. Yeah. Uh, because I've battled my own things too, and uh, you just have to remind yourself like it gets better. But without the rain, there's no rain. That's a that's yeah. a very Hawaiian way of yeah, looking at things, is, right? That is. There's not a lot of rainbows around New York City, <laughs> uh, but definitely where you are. That it's unbelievable to hear you say that. I'm also um, like like I I didn't even think of this component to the Izzy doc. Like I just thought it's a great look at him, but like other athletes are gonna watch that and have the oh one hundred percent bro you one hundred percent. And not only athletes, it's just it's regular human beings, bro. Guys yeah. who think they're so tough, you know what I mean? Sure. Like people who has this tough exterior, they're gonna be like, look. Look, if this guy can act that way, then yeah. I can act that way. Or even like, you know, like, bro, like, you know, I love you, Izzy, but Eugene, Eugene is the man Eugene in that thing, man. bro. He's the man Eugene in there, man. bro. And like to see to see someone of his stature to go through the emotions that he did when he when he was talking in there, it was uh it was just cool to see, man. By the way, why didn't you go down the path of drugs and like I'm sure it was very easy for you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure it could have been. I mean, everybody asks me all the time, like, why, why this, why that? I, I saw what drugs did to my mom, you know, to, I, I know drugs is a key opponent of why my dad wasn't around. I, I, I see drugs, what they do to some of my close friends' families. And then I, I also saw drugs do to people that, that, that I saw was around and like that was older than me, you know, like this just like I wouldn't say friends, but like guys like oh I see like oh I see this guy around and then you end up seeing him on the streets like weekend. So I'm like, oh man. Like even even to today, like like uh, me and Rush was just like out and about on the beach, you know, me and him, he we we got BB guns. So we was like out on the beach just shooting BB guns, you know, whatever. And then, like this 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 guy walks up to me and like uh and he asked me, like, oh, how much is your, uh, I was riding a Saran bike, and he's like, oh, how much is your bike? And he looks up, he sees me, he's like, oh, Max is my classmate from when I was, like, first grade. Like, the earliest memories of this kid is when I was first grade. We went from first grade to graduating together. And this guy, and I was like, oh, like, and I, and I seen him, I seen him around, like, I know that's what he was, but then to him to actually talk to me, and then he, him remember me, like, I would have thought he would never remember me, and then he remember me, and like, he actually know what I'm doing too, so like, fighting and stuff, so it's just, it was just crazy, man, and I was like, seeing that, like, not even now, but even before, I was like, bro, I don't want to go down this train, I don't want to be uh, another, an, another person in a stat book somewhere, mm towards bad stuff, you know? Like, if I'm making stats, I wanna make them in the most positive way they could possibly be, you know what I mean? Punching someone in the face is not too positive, but it's a legal way, you know right. what I mean? But at the end of the day, it was just, that's, that was the main thing. I was like, I, I see where these guys go. I, I, I seen what happened to family members, family members' friends, I, I, I saw this, and I was like, all right, this is not for me. I do not wanna do that, and, uh, I just wanted to be great in something. I don't know what it was, but in my mind, I, I just wanted to be. Whatever I think I did, I wanted to be the greatest at it and keep going, you know, and then try and change the generation. No, it's, it's, I mean, I'm sure you heard it. It's just generational curses. That's what it is. That's why, like, some of these guys can't, can't see out of their little box that they live in. Like, this is the way. Like, since my parents did this, I got to do this. Right. Since since my friends is going to this party, I'm, I got to go to this party. You know how much parties and whatever, when I was like a young kid, I had to like skip out on, you know what I mean? I was like, bro, I'm good. I'm training tomorrow. I got to wake up early. 
Wow. You know what I mean? And they'll, they'll be like, ah, come on, you can train later. Nah, it's good. You know what I mean? It's okay. It comes to a point where you can have that fun, but that, that, that wasn't that time. You know, now you can let loose a little bit here and there because you need to, but there, there are certain times and places where you can take it. And, and I saw the bad road and I saw the good road, you know, and I saw people who take the good road, then go back to the bad road too. Right. You know, it wasn't always like all bad. And I saw people doing bad and then they hit the good road. And I see people doing great now, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's never ever how you start start the race, it's how you finish. So I always tell people, just finish strong. Finish strong and uh, whatever is hold belief to you, you're gonna fail. You're going to fail. That's just it. That's what I mean. Like everybody's like, oh, how do you do it? Blah, 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 this and that. It's like, brother, I got like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you because I didn't even think about it, but I failed a bunch of times. I got like fucking seven, seven losses, I think, next to my record. Does that make me any lesser person of anybody else? No, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's only losses if you don't learn. And I learned every single time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I try to tell somebody who's having hard times, like, bro, you may feel like you lost now, but turn this loss into a learning. Then you never truly lost because look, you're going one step in the direction, you know? Sometimes you do feel like you take one step forward, three steps back, but that got to happen, you know? Maybe the next leap is 10, so you don't know. You you got six steps back, so that's the main thing. We're just trying to uh, just trying to help somebody to, to just be the best they can be. Uh, do you think if you didn't find fighting, you would have gone down that bad path? I, I, I don't... Uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, it just wasn't honestly, I could say, yeah, I just wanted, I wanted to be the greatest whatever brother. If it was a trash man, yeah. I would have been the best trash man there is, you know, if, if you got the trash man of the month, my face would have been plastered on that thing for at least 11 of the months. I tell you that much. So at the end of the day, that's just what I want to do. You know, anything I want to, anything I, I dip my toes in, I want to compete and I want to be the best in, no matter what it is, business or even even f try surfing with Rush, you know what I mean? Like, if it's surfing against him, he's, he's what, 11-year-old kid. I'm, like, calling him out on waves. Like, what's up, boy? Like, how you saw that wave? You know, that's, I'm, just comp I, I'm just competitive like that. So, at the end of the day, I think so I would have, my competitive nature would have pushed me to do something no matter what job I did. But wait, your, your wife is a pro surfer. Yeah. So I feel like your competitive uh, nature gets I'm squashed. Thinking, I get my ass kicked, but you yeah. know what I mean? But it is, it's a learning experience, brother. Right, 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 right. It's a learning experience. Like, wow, I'm learning. My wife is kicking my ass. That's about it. You know so, And then you kick your son's ass. No, no, no. He's actually getting good. He's getting good. Yeah. So like, uh, it was funny what it, like, it's, it's like six hours, right? Six hours uh, behind or six hours oh, behind. Yeah, yeah. And we're at Izzy's after party, and we just like, we wasn't gonna go, but uh, we saw Izzy and him walking out. He's like, oh yeah, it's come true real fast. So we just went real, real, real quick. And like, my son calls me up, Dad, Dad, I got barrel today, or whatever. And barrel is like when the wave like breaks over you and you're in oh, it, right? Oh, sick. And I was like, yeah, right. I was like, bro, if it didn't record, it never happened. Don't lie to me. Like, I was thinking like maybe like the wave was like right here. He just dipped his head, yeah, his yeah, head yeah. got it, you know, and I think whatever. And this kid, he uh, there's this app called Surfline. You go on Surfline, and the beach he's surfing at has cameras. No way. Yeah, he remembered what time he was searching. Oh he kind of looked at the time of where he was. He searched. He finally sent it to me. He's like, "I told you, I got barreled." And like, was that's it legit? Compared. Yeah, it was legit. Like he he it got thrown over him, and he didn't he didn't make it out. He 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 ate it. But I was like, "Brother, that was legit." That's so, your son. Yeah, he competed yeah, too. Yeah, like yeah. in that in that nature, so. It's glad to see that it's still fighting on. Like he's just calling me out all the time. Be like, I surf way better than you all the time. And we got to we got to see him grow up in front of us. For sure. Because you would bring him around to everything. Uh -huh. How's he doing now? He's doing good. He's doing good. I he mean, wasn't at the last one, was he? No, no. So we're actually trying to get him into a into a private school now. Okay. And, and, and the private school is like they're all about attendance. Uh -huh. So like if, if the fight was uh, if the fights is like fight like during his schools yeah, and stuff, I can't days, bring him anymore. Yeah. Uh, Cause he's like he's gonna be sixth grade next year. Yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. fit in sixth grade. Like the the first two like even fifth grade was like kind of, oh fourth grade is kind of like whatever you know. But fit in sixth grade is like you're getting ready to middle school already, bro. Yeah, you know yeah, like yeah. Was he can't bombed? be missing. He was bombed. He was supposed to come here. Oh, oh. So like, cause they're on summer break right now, okay. and he was supposed to come with us on this trip, but um, the smoke, the wildfire smoke happened, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like his lungs is like, I don't know. Sometimes it's, it's weird. I, I wouldn't say he has asthma, but then like if he's around smokes and stuff, like he always coughs. So I was like, I saw how bad it was here. I was like, bro, I'd feel terrible if something yeah, bad happened yeah, to him. Yeah. But it, it cleared up as soon as it like, did. but it was as, bad. Like, it was yeah, bad. It was, bro, it was yeah. terrible. It was like the. Did you, the were you here like when it happened? No, no, okay. the air, like right before I left, the air was like 200 something. I yeah, was like, yeah. oh my gosh. And then we got on the plane at 150. 
And then when we got off the plane, it was like 30 something. So I was like, okay, good. Like, yeah, was yeah. it like, bro, it looked like a zombie apocalypse. It was like an orange. The day we bro, were it was here, crazy. Was, the skies were orange. It was, it was crazy. And you guys knew was, this was going to happen? Or? Those damn Canadians, man. Oh, they fucked it all up. Nah. You know it was their fault, right? Yeah, it's a there wildfire, wildfires right? in yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not their fault. It's a no, wildfire. No, I'm Canadian. I could say that. Yeah. You know, I could fuck around. No, but yes, it was a wildfire. But the fact that it came all the way down here, like we're talking four or five hours away. Bro, it's crazy. And it looked like, uh, so has he mentioned to you that he wants to fight? Who's, uh, oh, Rush. Your son. I mean, he does jiu-jitsu. He's he been asking me to teach him boxing. So we see what happens. We see what happens. I don't want him to You fight. don't want him to fight. No, 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 no. I know how hard fighting is. And, like, he doesn't have to, right? He don't have to. No, I mean, if he wants to. If he asks me, is, we're going we're gonna to figure it out. But I, know I don't want him You're not to. pushing him to? No. Do you, do you feel uncomfortable with, you know, you've talked about sparring and long-term health and things like that. Do you, you feel uncomfortable with that? For sure, you know, even with the, even just, just, just with the hits, you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I, I keep on trying, like, if he ever does tell me one, I'll just tell him, like, bro, I took all the hits, I did all this, so you can yeah. live a freaking better life and do whatever you want to do. Like, spend your so much time, like, hopefully, he says he wants to become a professional surfer. Oh, sick. So we see what happens, you know what I mean? Like, if it's not, like, a uh, competitive route, there's so much ways that like, you can free surf and stuff, and... And be a model. I don't know this kid. Like he got long, like beachy, wavy hair, bro. The fit that, and then his freaking, just his like the way he acts, you know, and and stuff is just. He's a superstar. Bro, like, I remember could, at those workouts. Freaking, I told him, bro, go be a model, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. No, you don't have to punch in. Yeah, he's like he's good in front of a crowd. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he doesn't need to fight. No, I don't think so. Okay, and then there's pressure. You got to live up to your old man. You're one of the greatest. Like, who needs no, that? No, 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 none of that. You don't, you don't need none of that. You make your own name. If you did fight, I would tell them, bro, you, you, bro. You don't have to listen to none of yeah. these guys saying anything. I, I mean, you, you. I hate when people would be like, oh, when I was coming up, they compare me to, you know, like Pettis and then, or uh, of course the BJ. I'm like, yeah. bro, that's them. That's yeah. them. I'm Max Holloway. You know, leave me alone. You know. And his name is Rush Hall. He's not even a junior, you know? Right. Leave him alone. You know, if he's going to do that, that's what he's going to do. So this is so great. We've been talking for almost an hour. We're almost done. And I've not asked you anything about fighting. Isn't Perfect. that great? Perfect. I can go now, man. I know. <laughs> but I, just, I, do, I do have to ask a couple because they, yeah, they'll, they'll get mad sure. at me. Um, on the post where I posted who's going to be on the show today, uh -huh. Zombie wrote on the post. He wrote, yeah. like, I'm waiting yeah. or something like that. So is that the one? I mean, I you know, I, I called him out. He answered back pretty quick. So the ball is in UFC court, man. The but, ball is there. I mean, it's obvious, right? I would I, I would love that. You know, yeah. like I said, I, I told everyone, like, from from that time of when WC was coming up, I fought most of those guys, the Ricardo Lamas, the Aldo, the Pettis, Dustin Poirier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one I never get yet. I didn't get to get him, so... And he stood here, stood top 10. I think he's, like, number 7 or whatever it, it may be, so... It makes sense right now. It makes sense. Uh, this one fight, I, I, I'm hearing he wants to retire, so why not oh, go out of a bang? You damn. know what I mean? Why not go out of a bang? Like, Overseas, would it be? I have no idea. Okay. That, that I, never hear not, I never hear nothing. I, all I know is the... I called him out. He replied with a cute video message, so... Let's figure it out. Uh, when would you like to fight if it was up to you? Whenever, bro. Whenever. You're I feel great. Go? I feel good. I feel the great. Fall uh, or something? I would, yeah, I was telling Tim I wanted to fight two to three times this year. So oh. if we can, you know, if we can figure this one out and then maybe maybe get a get a third one too, we'll see what happens. Okay. And uh, I mean, obviously your last fight was tremendous. Mm -hmm. So you're still a factor at 45. But I even heard you say recently, like, you want those other belts. This is still yeah. on your mind. Oh, for sure. So there's the other belts, but there's always... Like what I tell you, and you know this, yeah. it's always better to go to a different division while you're holding a belt. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's just what it is, you know? But we see what happens. You know, we see how we see how July pans out. We see how my next fight pans out. And we just see the way of the direction, you know? Who knows, you know? We saw that fun BMF belt with Gaethje and Poirier. A freaking me and Poirier for a third time I love. And people keep harassing me about Gaethje anyway, so... At the end of the day, that'd be fun, you know? At 55, I know 55, there's a lot of fun fights with me. Maybe the the Olivero two, whatever, and then, of course, I never got to finish the thing with Khabib, so Islam's there, so that'd, that'd be a oh, great shit. thing. I so. feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like there's more exciting fights for you at 55 than 45 at this point, because you've kind of been there, done that yeah. with all those guys. No? So we see what happens. You, know? you like just I named see. five 55ers yeah. right now. Yeah, like I said, bro, we see the lay of the land, you know, never say never, you know, that I know people shit on the BMF belt, but... Bro, that BMF belt would look real nice in That's a collection. All those uh, featherweight belts. By the way, are you blown away by Charles at this point, like that he turned into this guy? I have to admit, 
I didn't think he would turn into this guy, right? <laughs> like he was always kind of, you know. Bro, he's a killer, bro. Yeah, it, bro. It, even even in the even it, even in his fights, bro. Like even before his fights, before he doing this killer, he was always a killer, bro. He just needed to figure it out, and I think he figured it out. And but if, like now he's become like a superstar. Yeah, bro. He's you know it's sick, bro. It's it, it's uh, it was it's exciting to see, bro. Especially with uh, him not getting it, like getting that direct rematch, which I thought was like. Kind of weird, but you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is, and uh, hey, he can't be denied. Someone said something uh, interesting to me on Twitter because um, you know he got on the microphone. On, I don't even know if you watched. Did you even watch? No, it I didn't said, watch. Yes, it. Didn't watch <laughs> exactly. It. Well, he got on the microphone and spoke English, which I think it was the first time he ever. Yeah. 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 And someone said that, and going into that fight, he was winless in Canada. Had never won. I think he was zero and four. I, in I Canada. saw that stat. I yeah, saw that stat. Which is crazy. Yeah. And someone said he lost his voice in Canada against you. In Saskatchewan, I remember the voice yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he he regained his voice in Canada and spoke a new language in Canada. That's crazy. All those years that's later, that's cool. And you look at bro. I mean, leave crazy, it up to the right? internet to figure out yeah. little things out. Because so. that's cool, bro. Even like thinking back to that fight, like at that point, if you would have told someone, what was that? 15, 2015? 15, bro. Yeah, 15. so you would have told me, like, oh, you know, nine years later, eight years later, that he would turn into a superstar like he is now. And this place is going, like, he got the biggest pop by far in Vancouver. Brother, all I know, all I hope is that, I, I hope that guy got compensated somewhere, bro. You know, no. you know he was the, you know he was the dude over there for that pay-per-view card, That's bro. right. You know, no disrespect to the main event or anything, but, but Charles was, he was that dude for that card, I think. You have been what one thing I love about you, and you talked about it recently. The judges, you were on the open scoring train long before uh -huh. any of us. I'm big time on the open. I talk about yeah. it all day, kind of ad nauseum. But like you saw what happened with Kai Car France, yeah. it drives me nuts. Yeah, and nothing is being done, brother. Like, I, I don't know. You know, it is what it is. You know, I, I think so. That's uh, that's something that the UFC guys got to figure out. But you know, I wouldn't. I I I, I can see both sides, and I mean, I can see why it can be not good and i can see why it, it, it's really good you know but at the end of the day it's like it's it's pick your poison whatever side you want to be on it you know so i just want transparency yeah exactly i just want to know what exactly. they're thinking exactly. i can't even talk to them i ask them to come on and they won't even let them come on which i think is messed up that i could talk to you that i could talk to a promoter i could talk to a coach a manager but the actual dude who's putting 10 9 10 8 that's insane that you can't do that i mean they don't do what them. izzy said bro do what izzy said keep these guys accountable they make won't them let do, us. Make, That's the, the make them do the interviews after, right after the fight. Why you pick this guy? Right. And I would love to hear because, like, it's just uh, the thing to me is just so far off. Like, how can how can one guy be so far off? Like, when you see the rounds getting judged, how can you how can one guy be like these two guys here and then the other guys here? And then you look at the cards like these guys winning the round on this side, but then on this card, this guy's losing. And like, it just makes zero sense to me. Right. I, I don't know how people can be so. Detached from reality, it's it's crazy. And then the thing is, we have no explanation. So if the guy comes out and says, "Look, the reason why I gave Amir Al Bazi ten nine over Kai is because of X, Y, and Z," then I'd be like, "Okay, cool." We don't know because yeah. he won't speak about it. Yeah. They don't let him speak about it. That's fucked up. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. I remember you went to the Invicta card and you watched it, the open scoring. That was cool, bro. Yeah. And you see the card, you see it like, oh shit, you know what I mean? It it actually, time I to think go. it makes it exciting. People say it will take the entertainment value away. Yeah, for me personally, like me personally, I, I, I see the both sides, like I said, but for me personally, like, like I, I, I mean, so I can see how some guys would be like, yeah, okay, I'm winning, I'm up tree, I'm chilling, you know what I mean, whatever. But then I can see also guys like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm up tree, who cares? I'm gonna right. continue battling this guy, you know? Like, but it, it's, it's fair play, bro. It's 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 a give or take thing. It's it's super weird, but I don't know. You, and the thing is different, you know. When we saw him in Victor, it was a much smaller event, and you know the crowds or whatever it had the effect. So I would love to see what the effect is with bigger crowds and, mm. and, and, and like a UFC crowd and people screaming and seeing how how the judge would react because they hear this and that, and then you don't know. Then you really see people panicking on the spot, like oh shit, who yeah. I go, you know. So at the end of the day, it's a it's a really give a give or take thing man it's just there's so many variables that you can put in and i understand it but i mean why not you know what i mean like i lean more to stuff like why not just try it one time right you know? right by the way last thing before i go i was just in um uh dublin and some guy was showing me around and when he's showing me around he's showing me this he's showing me that he's like oh and that's the um i think was it james that's the place where max holloway went he was <laughs> like that's how you referred to it he's like that's the spot where max holloway went. was it jameson jameson, that was jameson. jameson this that's day. one of the best things and i like i'm kind of bummed that it didn't lead to something you know because oh, it was so thoughtful and like subtle 
and I, and he he was coming up, you know, Connor was coming up with the proper twelve at that yeah, point, yeah, yeah. and you're showing, and you're in, on yeah, his. Yeah. Did you go specifically for that? Uh, we, we, were you already in Ireland? Or we was in Ireland, we was in Ireland hanging out. We were just checking out the spots, and then I guess Jameson found out that we was there, and they reached out and they said, "Hey, you want to come check out the distillery?" So it was like, "Yeah, why not?" And then I we thought that you picture. actually flew just to do this. No, we was chilling. Yeah, we was you chilling. Just chilling. What, Ireland and Hawaii are not very close Bro, to each other. You just fly. You do whatever you like do sometimes, you know? That and was incredible. We had, we had nothing better to do. It's like, hey, let's take a trip. I feel like that one has to happen I, I, before it's I, all said I and mean, done. I mean, I think it happens. I don't know what's going on right now with the dude, but I think so. At some point, it happens. I don't know if it's going to be in the UFC or a boxing or something. I think, I, think, I think it happens, though. Do you have to have a boxing match before it's done? I would love to. I would love to have a boxing match. I wouldn't say I have to. But I would definitely love to have one. That's so, like I feel like that's something you need to cross off the list. For sure, one hundred percent. At least one of them. At least, At least one. one of them. This has been a pleasure, my man. Thank, Thank you, you so brother. much. I really Thank appreciate you, it. A lot Thank of you, fun. Uh, you're in Maryland, probably sold out, right? Can people go check? We have the poster. Yeah, I mean, you can go check the link. I'm not sure if it's like because I I saw last night they people wanted it in and then they just reopened it just for a little bit. So there it is. Be, yeah. All right. Well, go check it out if you're in the Maryland area. Uh, area, excuse me. Uh, Max Holloway and Sue. This was a lot of fun. No, I appreciate thank you, brother. it. Thank you. Uh, all the best to you. Congrats on the recent win. Uh, I'm happy we squashed our beef. You know, it was a little bit <laughs> dicey there for a moment, but we're all good. And uh, I can't wait for that that's zombie your fight. Own, that's your own demon. That's to my yourself, own demon. That brother. is my own demon. Yep. And I'd love to have one of the toys here. I mean, yeah, I yeah. I'll, I'll try to figure it out. All right, I'll try cool. To figure it out.